today. So it is Wednesday Yay. and we are so excited to be with you. We have a lot to get started on, so let's go for it. Our agenda, make sure you're reading through these every day, checking off all of these items. It's very important that you complete all of your work on time. If you turn in work late, it's minus 10 points every day. And after three days, we close the assignments and you can't access them anymore. So make sure that you're doing your work on time. Here are your objectives. We're trucking right through these, getting things done. We still have our same essential question. How do you find courage in the face of fear? And we have a really fun activity for you today. Yes, this is super fun. We're gonna talk a lot or today about making predictions and how we make predictions. And so you will see a variety of pictures up here on the board. And we are going to try and figure out what each one of these um, is. What is it? And so whenever you make predictions, you ask questions. So you look at this first picture here, and we need to ask some questions about it. Um, so it's got like a rough surface. Yeah, I wonder oh. what kind of things have rough mm -hmm. surfaces. What rough surface? Like where have I seen that texture before? Mm -hmm. I can't even think of where I've seen that texture before. Yeah, and it's kind of like a beigey color. So a rough texture with a beige color. Kind of like this white outline. Yeah, and then, well, I'm not 100% sold on that one, but what about this one in the middle? Ooh, I know what that is. I, I, when I touch it, I feel like it's going to be maybe sh like slick. Yeah, yeah. slippery, a little bit slippery. Bit. And the um, color. The color. It's right, orange, orange, bright orange bright color, color kind of helps me to be able to predict what I think it might yeah, be. Yeah, I think I might know that one. Uh -huh. And this one over here on the right. It almost looks like lights. It looks like dandelion <gasps> things. The you things blow. You blow and yeah. Oh, like seeds. Yeah. Little bitty seeds. Little bitty seeds. Oh, mm. goodness. Do we think that there may be a common thread? Maybe. Between all of these oh, things? There well, could be. When yeah. I look at this picture, I'm thinking that kind of looks like little bitty seeds mm -hmm. in the middle of a sunburst. Yeah. Yeah, that one tricked me at first because it looks like a flower. It does the kind of look like a flower. flower. Oh. But if you look closer, you do see those little seeds. And flowers don't have seeds, seeds like that all the time. Hmm. Oh, that, this purple looking thing, or pink, I can't tell if it's purple or pink kind of looking. It looks, it almost looks like cotton candy. Yeah, like cotton candy. That's what I was going to think. If you could touch it, it would be like cotton candy. candy. And then this one that has a similar texture to the one up top in the middle. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So what I want you guys to do, I want you to pause the video and comment. What are your guesses? What do you predict that these, these things are? Because hmm. I think I have predictions for all of them. I think I have predictions. I, yeah, most of them most uh, fit them. what I think, except for maybe one. The the purple cotton candy one's tripping me up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this one up here is tripping me up just mm -hmm. a little bit. Let's see. So well, pause right. and tell us what you think it is. What do you think? And when you're ready, we're gonna move on to the next slide. slide. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. oh. Okay, I was wrong about this one then. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so the top one with that rough kind of beige, yeah. that was the outside of a cantaloupe. Okay. Then we have our oranges, and that bright orange color was, and that texture was kind of a giveaway. That was a, I, I kind of felt confident about that one. Okay. And it is dandelions. Yeah. I'm so happy because I thought it was like another fruit. Um, that was me. I was thinking that they were all fruits. I was thinking they were all fruits, too. Uh, and then we have kiwis with that little starburst with all the seeds. And then a sponge for our um, purple rough Oh, that texture. makes sense now. Yeah. yeah. And then limes. limes. I, love I love limes. I love limes. Okay. And so that's a fun little exercise that you can make all of these predictions and ask those questions. And then you get the answer and you see if your questions helped you or hurt or didn't help you. So when you make predictions, um, those are reasonable guesses based on what you know from experience. 
um, all the time. You make predictions every day. Um, then you gain additional information and that either confirms the prediction or you have to revise what your prediction is based on the information that you've gained. Kind of like when you're making a hypothesis in mm -hmm. science. Exactly. When I'm thinking, so if I look outside and I see that the clouds look kind of heavy, I'm going to predict perhaps we will have rain. I should grab my umbrella. And so in the middle of the day, if I look out and I notice it's sunny, I gonna change myself based on that prediction say well I guess I don't need my umbrella today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so you also can make predictions and confirm your predictions as you read mm -hmm. and so as you read we can stop and say well what's happening here and what do you think will happen next and either you've made a correct prediction or something else happens and you have to revise your prediction and good readers do that without mm -hmm. even realizing that they're doing it I know I find I'll be reading a book and making predictions, and what I don't like is if a book is too predictable. Yep. So if I'm reading and by a quarter of the way in, I already know what's gonna happen, I don't enjoy that. I like a book that really I have to think about it to figure out what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Those are my favorite. And so you're gonna use the following aspects of informational text to help you make pre uh, make predictions. So. Um, you're going to look at the topics, the ideas, evidence an author discuss, discusses, um, the text features, which we spent a lot of time on last week, your subheadings, your bolded words, your graphics or pictures that are really important and help you make really solid predictions. And then you also look at the text structure, and that's what, how the text is organized. Um, it helps you take in new information and kind of segment the information too, and it helps you predict what the author is going to explain next. Mm -hmm. And so your subheadings, they typically tell you, um, you can make a prediction based on what the title of that subheading is, what that section is going to be about. Um, and last week that was a really true of our fears and phobias text. And so predictions, they're something that you do all the time. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do something a little different today. Ooh, what are we gonna do? I think it's time to show you guys some cool tricks. <laughs> All right, so our story today, you have previewed it, you have listened to it being read to you, Today, you're actually going to listen to a video, watch it, as we analyze the text. We're gonna go a little deeper into what it means today. So make sure that you stop and listen to this, read along with it, and get some really great instruction about um, what the story means and how to analyze a story. After that, you're going to complete your analyze the text questions on Google Classroom. Make sure that as you're answering these questions, you are citing your text evidence. Your answer should say, this is my answer because, because. this is what the text mm -hmm. says. Every single one of those analyze the text questions should be written that way in a complete sentence. So make sure you're doing that. Today we're going to look at commas. Commas are something that I tend to overlook a little bit because you don't really notice them as you're reading, but when you're writing, they're pretty important. So let's talk about commas with introductory phrases. So an introductory phrase is a phrase or a word at the beginning of a sentence that is not actually part of the sentence, it's like extra. And so when you add these extra pieces at the beginning of a sentence, you have to use a comma to let your reader know that, hey, this is extra information. If you read it all together, it's not going to make as much sense. So here you have an example. These days, you flood with embarrassment if your dad sings in front of your friends or you drop a tray in the cafeteria. So these days is a little bit of extra information, CC. These days, comma. You could actually read that without the phrase these days. You could read, you flood with embarrassment. And it makes sense without that little mm -hmm. phrase. So we have some examples, uh, some more examples of these introductory phrases and how they're used. 
Because of these brain changes, teens start reacting more strongly to social problems. So because of these brain changes is your introductory phrase, and then it's set apart with a comma. Again, if you take that extra information out and read, teens start reacting more strongly to social problems. That's a sentence all by itself. The because part is extra information. In Cyberball, research participants play a game of catch online with two other players. So in Cyberball is your introductory phrase. It's set off with a comma. We could take that out. And again, that's a complete sentence. In Cyberball is just a little bit of extra information. Unfortunately, the systems that trigger embarrassment and fear of rejection fire up years before the systems that tame bad feelings. So this is an introductory word, just one word, unfortunately. We could take that out, it would still make sense, um, but you set that off with a comma. So as you're reading, if you notice these commas, just kind of pay attention to them. Think about these introductory words, phrases, and clauses, and we will keep practicing those. Yes. Today, we are going to write an advertisement. So use, we're gonna use what we've learned in our story about embarrassment, and we're gonna create an advertisement for a service that helps young people overcome their fear of embarrassment. So I want you to think about a time that you were embarrassed. If somebody had created something for you to use to get out of that embarrassment or to not be embarrassed, what could that product have been? And we're going to start with an attention getting slogan or question. You want something that's going to get the, the attention, just like in a commercial. I mean, that's, that's what you're making is a commercial. You're making a commercial type flyer mm -hmm. that's going to get people's attention. And you want to be sure to include bulleted statements. You want to tell us how your service works, what it does for me, why I should pick your thing or your idea to get rid of my embarrassment. Support your statements with text evidence. So use your story to give you ideas on how you're going to fix my embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And end with a call of action that encourages young people to hire you. You want to end your advertisement making me want to hire you to get rid of my embarrassment. So, if you're having trouble coming up with ideas, let's think about an idea maybe. What's an idea that you can't use this one, but it kind of might give you a path in the right direction? So, my idea is an embarrassment game show. So, Ooh. if you're afraid of being embarrassed, you're going to come on my game show and I'm going to do all these things and embarrass you in front of people so that you get used to it. Ah, okay, and if you can back that up with text evidence, that would work. Or it can be a product. Miss Norman and I were talking about a product that she kind of made me think, well, that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, and so my product was a special device that would erase someone's memory for the last 10 seconds. So maybe you get up in front of the class and you trip and fall on your face, and you can pull out this little device and just everyone's memory is wiped for 10 seconds. And then they forget that that was an embarrassing moment and move on. Move on. So you, can, you see that it can be two different things. It can be a device, an actual thing of some sort that does something, or it can even go in a different direction like a game show. So be creative and get your juices flowing in your head because just having those two ideas made me go, ooh, I could do this, or I could do this, or I could mm -hmm. do this. And so, there's no right or wrong no, answer. No, there's not a right or wrong yeah. answer. So just you choose what you want to use. What you can and, use, and you're going to make your, it's going to be on a piece of paper, but we call it a flyer, an advertisement, and you're going to put on there the things that are going to make me want to have your product. Mm -hmm. So could they include a picture sure. of their product? Yeah. So you want me to choose your product as the product to get rid of my embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And make sure you think outside the box, okay? Mm -hmm. And speaking of box. boxes. Ooh. What's in our box today? Our daily box. Well, mm. it's very tasty. Ooh. 
So I'll hold on to that for a second and, mm. and I'll think on it. Mm. Tasty. Tasty. Is it sweet? Mm -hmm. Is it sour? Mm -hmm. Oh, we like sweet I and like sour. I like sweet and sour. <laughs> hmm. We'll have to think on that. Hmm. Is it a fruit? Mm -hmm. oh. Is it a lime? No. Sweet <laughs> and sour, it's a, a fruit. fruit. What's sweet an apple? And sour? Nope. An apple? I don't think of an apple being. Well, it could be sour. Hmm. A grapefruit? Mm -hmm. I give up. I give up. What is it? Tum, 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 tum. An orange! <laughs> sweet and sour. <laughs> Duh. Yes. Nice. It related to our we even yeah. saw prediction we even activity. Saw in the prediction, an orange. Yeah. That should have been the first thing that came to mind. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, so once you've checked off all these things, completed your activities, you're done for the day. Great job, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.